Why don't you serve each side dish on individual small plates? My son, daughter, and I all put our heads in at my angry mother in law. My name is Sarah. I'm a 46 year old housewife. I have a son and a daughter, Fred in high school and Amy in junior high school. My husband, Nathan, is a 40 year old office worker. My husband's father passed away after a year and a half of illness. We had talked about the future before my father in law passed away. And my husband told me that he didn't want his mother to be left living on her own. However, living together with my mother-in-law was nothing but hell for me. First of all, there was the food. We used to serve our meals in the platter style, which is to put each dish on a big plate and serve ourselves to our liking. This was because it was easier for me to clean up and also because we each ate what we wanted to eat which resulted in less leftovers. My daughter loves vegetables, and my son loves meat. But my mother-in-law could not stand that way. It's like you're feeding a dog! The first thing she complained about was how the food was served. Can't you at least put it in individual small plates and add a garnish or something? She would say. I don't know anyone who goes that far with meals at home. Well, I did. Go on and ask my son. I asked my husband, and he agreed that what she said was correct. I tried to make it look as requested, but she kept saying that the direction of the garnish placement was wrong or that this side dish should not be served this way, etc. And so it went for three meals. In the morning, we used to eat those supermarket bread with butter, I can't believe you serve bread with all those additives. Can't you prepare something better than that? She would say. What about salad and fruit? One after another, she orders me like that. And every time she did that, I would say, I really can't imagine anybody that goes to such lengths at home. But every time my mother-in-law would repeatedly follow with, I used to do it. Ask my son. When I asked my husband about it, he said he was sure she had done it. And it doesn't stop there. Why don't you watch the screens? Her monthly phrase is said as always. Don't you wax the floor once a month? If I followed all these rules, I would have to get up at 4 a.m. and go to bed after midnight. I was exhausted. I couldn't take it anymore. I can't believe that you've done all this, I mutter. You're a housewife, right? You're supposed to be the keeper of the house, keeping it clean and preparing meals perfectly. Otherwise, you're nothing but parasite, sucking off my son's money. She would scold me. A parasite? That's terrible. That's a terrible thing to say to a person. I don't need to say this. But my husband is totally incapable of doing housework. So we couldn't share the cleaning, laundry or meal preparation and I have been in charge of all of them. When I invite him out for dinner, both my mother-in-law and my husband say, eating out is too tiring. So naturally, we have to eat at home. I have to do cleaning, laundry and daily routine that my mother-in-law asks me to do and I had no time to relax. If I mention even the slightest complaint? What are you saying? All I can say is that you're trying to be lousy. If you don't want to be called a parasite, just do it properly. I received my mother-in-law's attack of words at once. I felt my patience running out, so I asked my husband again. Your mother-in-law says that but I don't think there is enough time to do everything she says. Did your mother really do everything? Hmm. My husband rubs his chin as if recalling. Yes, she sure did. We each ate with small bowls of side dishes, and I remember there were several kinds of bread. I mean, I've seen my mom do it, so... It's hard to tell what a child likes and dislikes when it's on a big plate, and it's hard to get them to eat properly. 
So I guess mom's right. Anyway, what she says is correct. So make sure to listen to her. He says, "No, he can't be serious. There's not enough time to get all of it done." Just as I was thinking that, an incident happened. I went shopping with my husband, and when we came back, there was a reform contractor at our house. What are you doing? We're blocking the ventilation fan in the bathroom, my mother-in-law said. What? I had no idea what she was talking about, so I let out a crazy voice. Sure enough, the man had put something like a board on the fan. Wait! If you do that, the smell will be trapped. That's impossible. Then my mother-in-law continued, "Whose fault is it that I have to do this?" Huh? What? Me? My voice cracked. Yes, it's your fault. I don't get it at all. <laughs> What? I've never done anything to the toilet. No matter how many times I warn you, you only clean it once every two days. Huh? Huh? If you clean it every day, it shouldn't smell. In other words, we wouldn't need a ventilation fan. I told you so many times, but you wouldn't listen. So I decided to make an environment where you'd have to clean it. Huh? Huh? I was so shocked that I dropped the shopping bags in my hands. Hey, Nathan, this is just, this is just a dream. It's a nightmare. I shuddered and pointed at the scene to my husband, who was standing beside me. No way! That's too much, Mom. I nodded my head in agreement with my husband. That what was supposed to happen, but. What? What? My husband scratched his head in annoyance. If my mother is saying the truth, why don't you clean it every day then? Then he sighed. You know, my coworker said that after a few years, wives learn and follow their mother-in-law's ways. Listen to my mom and hurry up and learn her ways. Who the hell is this coworker? I'll never forgive him. I was completely out of control. Enough! I've been called a parasite, and I've been told I have to do whatever you say. I can't do this. It was like a dam had burst. I'm going to leave. I ran out of the house. My husband was like, "I don't need two people doing the housework." My mother-in-law was like, "I'm glad we got rid of the parasite." I was worried about my son and daughter, but they are old enough to understand the situation, so they said, "Do what you and Dad want to do." When I asked them which one they would follow, they chose the one that was more lenient to them, saying, "I would rather have a messy but reassuring mother than a father who is fussy about rules." So I'm divorced now. So please let me stay. Ha <laughs> ha. I called my own parents. Even if there are more people living in the house, the size of the house won't change. You can only use one room, okay? And like that, they gave me a rough welcome. They welcomed me with open arms, saying, "It's no big deal if we have three more people in the family." Thanks to this, my children and I moved into my parents' house without a hitch. And while doing housework, I looked for a job. I had no work experience, but I got a job as a caregiver at a nursing home. Everything went smoothly. It felt nice. I have to do some heavy lifting sometimes, but I enjoy talking to the elderly at the nursing home every day. Maybe I should have gotten a job sooner. I think sometimes, but I didn't have that choice in my life with my ex-husband. When I think about my current situation, I wonder if my guardian angel had guided me here. Three years later, I received a call on my phone. I had been working as a caregiver for three years already. Just when my job was going well, I was too busy to notice it. But when I looked at my history, 
There were dozens of incoming calls that day alone. The caller was my ex-husband. I knew from the moment I left that house that this would happen after a few years. After work, I had no choice but to call him back. Then, Sarah, help me, Sarah. I heard a pathetic voice over the phone. What's wrong? It's been a long time, eh? I tried to act nonchalant, but he mumbled, Mom is... in a fading voice. What's wrong? Did she fall ill or something? I ask. From that point on, he was so frenzied that I couldn't understand what he was saying. We decided to talk in person. I asked him to come over to my place. That weekend, my ex-husband and mother-in-law came over. Those two, myself, my daughter, my son, and my parents sat around the table. My mother-in-law's back was straight as always. The first thing she said was, I don't mind if you don't come back. Then why did you come here? I thought to myself, but my ex-husband stopped her. Actually, we are here too. My ex-husband opened his banking app and showed us the balance of $13. I bursted out laughing. Oh my gosh, it's less than my hourly pay, my son said. You weren't a spendthrift, were you? When we got divorced, you had about 60000 in savings. I asked. That's right. But then, as soon as you were gone, the money disappeared. I guess my husband finally figured out what was really going on. Haven't you been secretly using up the money? My mother-in-law still refuses to accept her position, tries to put the blame on me. Of course not. You know where all the money went, don't you? I looked at the balance in the bank account and my mother-in-law's face alternately. My mother-in-law stammered. This mother-in-law is a jerk to ask me if I haven't used the money, even though she knows that she's been spending it herself. While I thought that, I snicker and say, You finally noticed? To my ex-husband. Now, it's time to break the story. When we divorced and I left the house, I actually was thinking, if I leave, this house will fall apart within a few years. Let's take the time to explain. Huh? My mother-in-law raised her voice as if she had no idea. First of all, we'll have some variety of freshly baked bakery bread and pastries in the morning. You've just been cutting them to serve. Salads and fruits are brought cut up and put on the plate as well. A hundred percent fresh juice is bought in a carton. And for lunch and dinner? It's a simple job of plating the prepared foods bought at the deli section. Even during the holiday gatherings, I've noticed. It was all from that luxury supermarket nearby. The food from that deli section has the garnish, right? My mother-in-law is still thinking of possible excuses she could make. I've put each one on individual small plates and bowls. Unlike you. Does that mean you've done it just by plating them? That's not right. My mother-in-law choked on her words. I continued. And about cleaning the screens and waxing. I don't think those were amateur cleaning techniques. What? This time, it was my ex-husband who raised his voice in surprise. Then, mom, how did you... It's written in the bank history, isn't it? There, once a month, on a regular basis, were the words house cleaning. You left the screens and wax to the house cleaners, right? Mother-in-law, that's not doing anymore. I questioned my mother-in-law sternly. Then... My mother-in-law started mumbling something like, I was just trying to keep the house neat. I sighed. Um, what was your father's job again? A lawyer. Well, a lawyer's wife should be able to live with such extravagance. I mean, that's probably why you've been able to do it all this time. But now your husband passed away 
And you know your son is just an ordinary office worker, right? Using a house cleaner, buy prepared foods every day, there's no way you can make it financially with that kind of lifestyle. My mother in law's head finally exploded at my righteous argument. I have a sensitive taste. I don't want to fill my stomach with bad food. Yes, whatever. So, don't you have more to say? I grinned and urged my husband to speak up. Perhaps the most excruciating part was that thing. My ex husband forced out a thin voice. The bathroom. It stinks. Oh, yes. Here it comes. I shouted in joy. My parents covered their faces as their shoulders shook at my bizarre reaction. Both of them tried to look angry, but I could see that they were holding back their laughter with all their might. What? Hmm? So, why do you think this happened? I tried to encourage him to say it. But because I'm the one cleaning the toilet? Nope, incorrect. Wait, but didn't your mother used to clean it every day? Why don't you do it now? Then my mother in law, as if she had come to her senses, was furious. There is no way I would clean such a dirty place. That was the answer I expected. So, you already know what's the deal, don't you? Why that bathroom was cleaned every day until your father passed away. Yeah. My ex husband's father was a lawyer and used part of his home as his office. The assistant who worked there cleaned the bathroom in the house every day while she was there. You mentioned that you cleaned the toilets every day, right? But that assistant only worked on weekdays, right? So, he only did it twice a week on Saturday and Sunday. I was doing the cleaning once every two days and you were complaining so much. You wanted to inspect my cleaning or a lack of thereof by blocking the ventilation fan to see if there was a smell in the toilet, right? If the smell was still there, you were trying to bully me. As you probably already know, it's impossible to make a toilet completely odorless. That's why there are exhaust fans and windows in the bathrooms. If you block them up, of course they will smell. My mother-in-law and my ex-husband are so ignorant. So, I went in to close up our talk. You called me a parasite who sucks off your son's money, but it turns out you were more of a parasite. And I guess it was fine when you're a parasite sponging off your lawyer husband, but the son who's a mere office worker was too weak to sponge off of. As a housewife, you're supposed to be the keeper of the house, keeping it clean and preparing meals perfectly. The fact that you were able to maintain that with just money and instruction is a miracle in itself. I really admire my father-in-law's patience and determination. And the inheritance that you used up. You should be thankful for me for keeping that inheritance while raising two children until we divorced. There was silence for a while. And then my ex-husband said, Mom, apologize. It's all here in the banking history. Apologize that your standard of living was wrong, that you weren't the one doing all the work, and all you did was buy the food while pretending like you did it and earn the respect. My mother-in-law is shaking with her head down. My ex-husband continued, You owe her an apology. If we don't get her to come back, this house won't stand anymore. Because you've got only $13, right? My son interrupted from the side. My mother-in-law shuddered and clenched her teeth, and she had her voice escaping from between her teeth. Please, come back. I'm sorry. Is this enough for you? I smiled back at them. No way, Jose! What? My ex-husband and mother-in-law shouted at once. I apologize to you. My mother-in-law turned her face red and shouted, but I ignored her and said, It's up to me whether I forgive you or not, and whether I go back or not. 
I wanted you to apologize, but I never said that I would forgive in return once you apologized. And to my ex-husband, I say, There's no benefit for me to go back. You are guilty of not realizing your mother was acting wrong and putting the blame on me. Why don't you go back to your stinky bathroom and eat your luxurious deli? And with that, I kick them out of our house. Now I'm the breadwinner, running the household with my Asian parents and my two children. My ex-husband left his mother when the money was all drained up. My ex-mother-in-law apparently lives in our dirty room, and people can see her garbage overflowing through the glass window of the room that once used to be her husband's office. Today, I ride my bicycle to work as always. Through this job, I met a man who is also a caregiver. He isn't a picky eater, and he is such a good eater. When I told him that we serve our food on a big plate, he laughed and said, I think I can finish it all by myself. He also is able to cook his own meals. When I visit his house, he serves me a big bowl of fried rice, his specialty. Hey, you know I'm a lady, right? But it's so delicious, I can't deny it. From now on, I want to spend a peaceful life with this man, who is able to gabble up the food from the same big plate as me.